So, here's a walk around of my 12 volt off grid, uh, kind of low energy anyway, um, catering trailer. Um, you'll see there is a solar panel up there feeding down here. Um, this is going down. Ooh. There's your solar, in, uh, solar controller. And then that's showing you the, the charge and whatever. We've got these switches here, so that's for your lights. And then that's for your hot water, outdoor lights, and then fridge one and fridge two. That's your fridge one and fridge two. They're both 12 volts. I customized them myself. Uh, that's your set up there. So you've got a fuse box up there. Oh, it gets darker. And then these are your breakers and then your main switch. So this, when you turn it off, when you're off. And then this is just a small battery that I'm using at the moment you could upgrade it and get a bigger one that's 80 amp hours lasts us for about a service anyway um, quick rip, whip around outside so we've got our outdoor lights here uh, which go onto the menu boards these menus they hang on there so we've got them just down there so you've got the legs for stability and then your front shelf um, you'll see there's hinges at the top of the roof here. Um, that will, I'll show you in a moment why they're there. So you've got your gas box, which is two uh, medium-sized pro propane bottles, the orange ones. Uh, you'll see the roof is open up here. That's your natural extraction. As I said, it's low energy. So instead of having an electric extractor that wastes energy, um, we've done it this way and the gas guy signed it off, it's absolutely fine. I did it to regs. Um, the, the right amount of area is there for the, you know, for the exhaust of the, the cooking gases anyway. Um, I put a really heavy duty jockey wheel on here because the smaller normal ones kept breaking. This is a military one that I bought from a military auction. Um, all of this is working, uh, it's braked. So when you brake, this compresses in and pulls the brakes on the wheels. Um, there is suspension on it as well and it's twin axle so you can carry extra weight so even though it's small it's certainly not flimsy it's been very well built um, you can definitely see it when you're driving around with it it holds its weight very nicely it doesn't rattle around very much um, so yeah here we are this is the opening side so you've got the hinges on the other side and then this on this side and it closes with these clamps uh, like Rolsch bottles and it's on gas struts which I'll show you in a second it's on these things um, so yeah you just basically push it down and lock it when you're in transit and then when you open it up it's got some switches on it as a safety mechanism you can't start the gas uh, unless the switches are open unless the doors are open so the front hatch needs to be open and the roof needs to be open and if they're not then the gas doesn't start um, so yeah because it's such a small trailer you see um, you know about two and a half three meters long um, we had to work with the space really carefully um, so everything's very ergonomic for what we do and i'll do a further video about um you know exactly what we use the trailer for just to to let you know um but just to have a quick whip, whip round we've got these fridges they're 12 volt fridges as i said earlier um, and they are on draw rails like this um so this is your 12 volt um evaporator plate it's called and so if i turn this on here you should see the lights dim actually. There you go, you might have seen that. And then you can hear it buzzing away. Um, you've got controls down here. Uh, it does actually freeze. Um, they are strong enough to freeze and be a freezer. Uh, but given the battery, you know, the battery isn't as big as it could be, so we can't leave them on 24 hours. They're more just for services. Um, so our setup is we have this shed here with our fridges and freezers, which 
when we would go out for a service, we'd literally go from our fridges and freezers, fill these up uh, as fridges for the service, come back, get the stuff back in the fridges and freezers. So this is being a low energy thing. This is just for services. Um, yeah, not for storing food and whatever. Uh, we turn it all off at night, basically. Um, and so, yeah, because it's small, we've got loads of space saving stuff. This is like hand wash and whatever. Um, got our sink, which drains down under there. Um, I've also put a plug hole in the floor. So at the end of a service, it's easier just to sweep up and then mop and just open the plug and let it all drain out. Um, basically little yacht oven this is from a uh, boat we weren't using the oven or the grill uh, very much i mean you can see that that has been used but that was from an old menu that we used to do um, we mostly just used the hobs um, which i'll show you in a further video and yeah so this is the hood above the deep fat fryer which the air runs out there uh, it should be absolutely fine to sign that off with the gas guy um, and this is our deep fat fryer um, it's a lincat twin uh, twin tank um, the reason for that is we were doing veggie and meat so we didn't want the veggie and the meat to be mixed in the same oil so uh, we also do have single baskets as well um, these double ones we were using so we could do two portions at the same time rather than just dumping them all in and not being able to time them we would you know just use the left one and then just use the right one and you know have a timer for each um, but yeah it's still in good working order um, we've got our shelves up here which we used for the packaging it's very bespoke this one uh, marble rail here and then because we were doing soup these were for the soup pots you'd have red for uh, beef or, uh, gold for chicken and green for tofu so it was sort of all color coded and everything's very ergonomic so kind of designed to do with one hand and you bring them down to your kettles where you'd fill up your soup and whatever um, but yeah just I'll get into that in a further video but um, we then have a chafing tray so your little gas burners go on the tray here and then you fill that with water and then your trays with your food in. Uh, we use those for the tofu. Um, yeah, just for the for the tofu, which went on top of the soups. And then you've got these trays here. So this is now for like your assembling kind of thing. So once you've got your soups ready, um, you've got all of your garnishes and stuff here that you can just whip down. And then your spare ones, once they run out, you can throw them into your dirties box and bring them up very quickly and easily. Um, so everything's designed to be quick and easy for the thing we were doing. Again, I'll tell you about it later. So we've got the solar panel, which I showed you earlier, and then um, this DC to DC charger, uh, it actually charges the battery from the van, which means that when... Um, I'll, I'm just going to run round. We've got two cables here. Uh, Get them out. Two cables here. So this is your usual uh, lights, your traffic lights, your brakes and indicators and such. And then I've got this cable here, which I would plug into the van. And basically that was power from the van's battery. And um, when you turn the lights on, it then charges the trailer. So we're charging the trailer from the van itself and then also from the solar um, and that combination was great so we could actually you know have the fridges on uh, for a couple of hours before our service so they'd get cold and then charge the trailer up the trailer battery while we were on the road and they would usually be a hundred the battery would be a hundred percent when we got to our service just from that and you know combination of solar and the van um, and then we'd do the service usually because the fridges were running all service they're the most hungry thing electrically these lights up here are really not very hungry at all they don't emit very much heat which is usually the sign 
Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, at the end of the service, there would be, you know, quite often about 50 or maybe even 40% on the battery because it's quite a small one. Uh, but then you'd get in the van again, you'd turn on the DC DC charger and it would charge everything up again. So um, yeah. That safety mechanism that I was talking about earlier, where you need the roof and the door open, um, it runs on 240, and our printer and POS system actually ran on 240 as well. So this is our power place, and then down here we have an inverter, which if I turn that on, you'll see two plugs. So one of those is for the um, cut off system up here you'll see it says power on um, so if I was to close the roof you would see this gas off light light up which means that it would um, not allow the gas to run and yeah basically this is your safety mechanism if anything goes wrong or there's a fire then you can press that stop button really easily on the way out um, you can just stop the, the whole gas from running there as well. Um, okay, so yeah, the other plug down here, one of them's for that, and then the other one is for that socket there. So we could then use our POS, which I actually made this to fit our iPad in here, so we could take orders. And then on this shelf up here, we had our printer, which then you could take the print, Bam, and then put it up into the marble rail up here. So again, everything's very kind of ergonomic and thought out. Um, I think that will do for now, for your first video of the inside. You've got like little sort of foldable cleaning things underneath the sink there. Um, and yeah, I think for now that'll do and I'll show you around when we've got everything set up the way that we would do things if you want to be inspired as to you know what you might be able to use it for if you don't have an idea already all right thanks a lot